I... I thought you were dead. My death was... greatly exaggerated. Hello, spirits. Ah, uh, Halloween. Often a time for amazing trends, specials, and even art that... Alright, oh, this is Velma. So, last video I said I could see the show continuing with a special. And I don't like that I was right. Season 3, I'm guessing, is going to be a short or special. It's not confirmed, but who knows? Anyways, Velma's Halloween special. Not so special. Before this video starts, all the footage from the Halloween special was AI interpolated. Not by choice, I'm afraid. Some dickhead won't post the special on any pirating platform, despite a lot of them saying they have it. And this isn't really a Warner thing, it's definitely a binge thing. Since previous seasons of Velma are also interpolated, I can tell by the smeary in-between frames that don't need in-between smeary frames. And the movements overall feel robotic. Once you see it, you'll know, trust me. So this is a smaller segment because there's not much to really talk about and I don't think Charlie Grandy knows what to do with his characters. One of which I had a part dedicated to the video about Norville and Lola breaking up. For a small recap on that, throughout season 2 they had the most healthy relationship in the entire show. Trumping over the main relationship. It's soulmates. Daphne, that term was invented by the publishing industry to sell books about vampires boning werewolves. Ah, a heartwarming moment. Run! So much so I actually liked their dynamic. Never their writing, but their chemistry was amazing. Their relationship was built upon solely on their interest and not Norville just going for the hottest girl. Before the show decided he needed to pick out which body was Lola. Which gets her mad and they break up because of it. Only in the special. You may as well have not bothered to include that in that finale because they're back together on good terms. Without acknowledging anything about what happened. And get this, because this is really dumb. I'll get to the story afterwards, but essentially the characters need to face their fears. And for Norville, it's to hurt someone's feelings. Let's see, girlfriend who broke up with him, only to suddenly be back together. Man, I wonder who it could have been. Some shop made me think you were gonna break up with me. Break up with you? But that would hurt you. And I'm far too thoughtful to ever purposefully hurt anyone. It was this old lady. He said he wouldn't send her letters to her in prison, which counts as facing his fear. Yeah, how much of the others face their fear is as stupid as that? They brought these two back together to match costumes, do a breakup that didn't even face his fear, and then go back to not knowing each other. Feels like that time could have been better spent on the Black Knight, but hey, who am I? I don't think anyone in history has heard the Black Knight Especially the one from Scooby-Doo, and thought it was racist in some way. Okay, well someone please tell me who the Black Knight is, and is it racist? Because it sounds racist. It's not, amazingly. Oh! So funny, I forgot to laugh! While I'm on inconsistencies, I think it needs to be said that Charlie doesn't know what to do with his own original characters added to this show. In Season 1, we had Gigi, Norville's girlfriend. Season 2, we had Amber, hex girl daughter. And Lola, Norville's girlfriend. Yeah, so they don't bring back these characters in any sort of way, unless they're needed for the plot. Gigi was only introduced back as that background friend of Velma in season 2, with maybe one episode actually having her on screen, where she was listening in about Daphne and Velma, and so her dad could supply exposition. Amber was barely a character in the last parts of season 2, since once the stuff about witches and Wiccan was done, that was it. That was their entire storyline. And Lola? Well, I just explained what happened to her. I don't think these people know how to write their character, considering they drop them in their next installment, or before the season actually ends. It's never consistent, and they leave nothing for these characters other than to manifest problems or to provide exposition instead of developing them, which is what they do with these two. I don't think their entire personality is novel and wicker. I think if you added them to the cast, you'd, you'd be surprised how well they bounced off each other. And you know it's funny really, I kind of forgot that, and it seemed Charlie did as well, 
that Dia and Fred's dad was a thing. Fuck, I remember his name was, but basically in season two, they had a double marriage with Dia and Fred's dad and Sophie and Velma's dad. And afterwards, you know, they kind of just forgot they were supposed to be, uh, let's see, fucking married? Despite it being an emotional conflict for the characters, and I'm not even kidding about that, Velma gets rich. Fred feels motherly love. Fred's dad becomes less cold. And yet, it's all basically dropped. Fred's dad just works as security. Dia does jack shit, as do literally the rest of the parents, whose only importance to the story is that they were somewhat responsible for the Black Knight's death. So they always set up an unsexy Halloween party instead of calling it a Halloween party. Sophie is there on call at the end, but besides that, they're not married. They don't talk about what happened. I don't even think they're in the same frame. The only things that actually carried over was Velma was a ghost. Lola acknowledging she was a brain in a jar, and I can't recall if they were ever hurt over the wedding considering I don't think it went through. You have to wonder if they fought anything out. But I digress, as this was just a warm up. You know, despite the Velma special being about Halloween, instead they make it about sexy Halloween. One, these are underage teenagers. Two, mask pulling mysteries has literally limitless potential on Halloween. And yet they opt to... Wait, the Black Knight? Wait, they're adapting an old Scooby-Doo villain without making him a random gag or they're not making fun of him? Holy shit. Vilma might actually be good. He's an incel. Please let the rest of my New Year's Day be quiet. Guess I'll go home now. Oh! Hey there, Psyche! See? There is no god. The Halloween special focuses on following the mystery of the Black Knight. Only after the Black Knight introduces himself to Velma, he says he's being framed for his kills, and it's up to the crew to figure out who the real killer is. Yeah, so if you've seen my last two reviews, you most likely have heard me talk about a repeating pattern or formula, really, where the killer isn't revealed until the last moment. And most often, the killer seems to be no one you would expect. But yet, we've seen them before, and all of it makes sense with their added context at the end. And take a wild guess out of this entire fucking roster who it is. No, I'm really gonna give you 10 seconds to pick one. Now, did you guess, and I thought this was an unnamed character because I barely remember them, but did you guess Evelyn? This old person who works at the Historical Society, who's been in like, apparently, five episodes where she's a background character? No? What are you, fucking stupid? Didn't you guess the character who barely appears in the special as the twist killer? See, that's my problem with Twist and Velma because yeah, they're plot twists, they catch you off guard, but they're Disney plot twists. Nothing in this special ever demonstrated that this old lady was the one killing people. Even with that extra 8 minutes of screen time, it wasn't enough for the writers. And I don't doubt when a season 3 or a new special comes out, it's going to be one of the characters you didn't expect to be a killer. Yes, it might better Scooby-Doo if it's a male and uh, Fawn if it's a female. Because older women seem to be the show's demographic in terms of killers. I wonder if the writers are sexist. See? It's really easy to write a joke like that considering they basically did it for race. The mystery deepens with every step. Anyway, this yearbook isn't the right year. Okay, but to actually talk about the plot, in order for Velma to get back into her body, the one summoning her back, including herself, must face their fears. And let me tell you, it sucks. What? Wait, the party's not also a jazz festival, is it? Oh my god, I don't fucking care. Because how most of them overcome their fears is just like clicking your fingers. Velma's fear is being forgotten, Daphne missing out by not doing the show, Norville hurting someone's feelings, and Fred getting a job for Saweetie, who can I say has way too much screen time. The fucking celebrity who has nothing to do with the overarching plot other than to be the star of the Halloween party has more screen time than their fucking killer! Yeah, she disappears for 15 minutes and has a few more minutes in total than Evelyn before the reveal, but that is still not great. Evelyn has like a minute or two of her talking and on screen in total. 
before it's revealed it's her. If she has any additional screen time after the 4 minute mark and between 28 minutes, then feel free to tell me because she is not there for the entire special. How the fuck do you manage that? Literally has her twerk and then an entire song about fighting sexy. Of sexiness, Daphne. There's no one way to be sexy because everyone finds different things sexy. Mama fears she may be forgotten before she calls her light, which she and Daphne almost got taken to if it wasn't for TP. This counts as overcoming her fear of being forgotten with a fear of going to heaven. P.S. I don't think she'd actually go to heaven. Okay, I thought I'd talk more about it a bit because I really want to give the animation crew a lot of credit. When you saw this scene, it was Daphne comforting Velma, right? Yeah, here's the audio. Anyone forget you? You saved this town twice, and every stall in this bathroom has one of your limericks. Personally, I think what Velma was feeling was the only one that felt realistic to overcome, and should have been the special's only focus for her to come back to life. And that seems to be the case when you soon hear how the others overcome their fears. People were moving on to Halloween while Velma was canonically dead, so yeah, she's gonna take that harshly. So her having her doubts about coming back would have been for nothing if she's forgotten. And in a way, her being taken to heaven is symbolic for suicide. If she goes to the light, she's gone. If she kills herself in her body, she's gone. The animation team met her expressions so realistic in this scene that with the muted audio, it makes it look really good. And that the other parts would have made it great if they weren't shit. You know, the writing and voice actor. This is why I advocate this show had so much potential because they had so many great things that could have been taken seriously. But it's always treated as a joke. And eventually, I want to discuss the true potential this show had. But yeah, that's the only good one by a mile. As the rest are done so unbelievably fast. On the way to the save everyone from the killer, Daphne overcomes her fear by saying she'll wait in the car so she'll miss out. And that instantly counts. Fred sucks at helping Sweetie, but protects her when it comes crashing down, which instantly counts. Norville breaks up with Lola, which instantly... Oh, wait, it doesn't. Go! How does it disappear? By telling the killer he won't write her letters in prison? Wow, that's bad. And they were paid to write that? The problem with overcoming fears is some are instant. But immediately doing one action doesn't equate to that. If I held a spider, I wouldn't be not afraid of spiders anymore. I would be fearing for my life. Filmers, I can understand because the only ones knowing you're about to be forgotten was her and Daphne before last second being saved by someone who does remember her. And then there's Daphne. She would have had to have missed everything without ever being acknowledged, texted back, etc. You can't exactly do that while Saweetie is actively recognizing her and asking her to come onto stage. Fred would have actually had to complete his job, not have the person he saved do more than what he did, because they're both still in danger. And Norville? C come on, do I even need to say it? How stupid of a fucking cop out that was. Especially just for them to break up again. Only he doesn't really want to. Blech, moving on. Honestly, I think it needs to be said and his main problem in a Halloween special titled this needs to be more special should be special. And its problem is its tone. Even in a Halloween special that's supposed to feel different from a normal episode doesn't do that in the slightest. They focus their story on an incel perv being killed in the 80s because a sexy Halloween party apparently is supposed to be important so the main villain can have people scared during Halloween only to be fouled by sex. Yes, that is a real sentence I said out loud and yes, that did happen. Anytime something serious is about to happen, it always just relates to something that's quite frankly the opposite. It's always brought down by that one thing that ruins it. A recent Halloween addition that keeps its consistent tone is the amazing Digital Circus. Episode 3 came out a day after Velma and quite frankly, it felt like whiplash to see it go from absolute dog shit to peak. Well, what do I mean? The horror aspect of this episode is always there with the creepy Gmod looking models following Pomni and Kinga. Even a funny joke that is most often always a jump scare setup. Please don't come. Okay, I won't. 
But I wanted to talk about something that, after a while, starts to slowly come to light. Kinga. In the show, the character has always been the insane comedic relief who's on the edge of being abstracted, or rather, turned to a monster when they can't deal with it anymore. Kinga looks like he'd always be next, hiding in a pillar fort, doing crazy things like a bucket in his head, or just breaking the laws of animation. But in this episode, as the longer he's kept in the dark, he's acting different to his usual weirdness. Almost the same as when he was out of character in episode 2. Instead of being the character who was just randomly pressing tape recording, staring into the face of a monster without fear, did he begin to truly show it? Where he began to think for himself until we hear the reason why. His wife was abstracted. He's left without memories, not being able to think clearly or control what he remembers whenever he's not concealed in the dark because anytime he is, his one true memory always lies within him about his wife. Unlike other abstracts before them, she was calm during her descent into madness, not acting out in aggression or pain towards Kinga. Unlike the rough jagged designs of the other abstracts, she was more smoothed out before she was taken to where they all remain. Kinga always has that memory to rely on when he's in the dark, and it's the only one he can ever control, because it's his only clear thought in the dark. Because in the light, he's insane. And to everyone else, that's how they perceive him. What this leads to is another type of horror fitting for the episode it resides in. One where a character knows what he does and how others look at him, but he can never change it because he'll forget in an instant. What this episode did was have an entire community sympathize with a chess piece than how another creator did with a group of teenagers. That's what will always separate Velma from being an adult show, as it never leans into the true horrors of what they have have at their disposal. But in my time of watching animated or live action shows, I have never seen a character written like Kinga. And I hope I never do. That's what I think about when it comes to the tone. No amount of Velma's runtime were they ever able to make these concepts scary or even a little bit tense for the audience. Especially for a Halloween special. There was no tension when I watched those moments because they were all ended the same, felt the same, written the same. What the digital circus was makes you feel for an insane character who, what we saw were funny quirks, were actually part of his personality scattered through what's left of him. Facing fears, a black knight ghost, a corrupted book, a graveyard of zombies, none of these felt like there was tension or its tone was ever different, as it was fast on sensual fears, a perceived murder turned incel ghost, demonic audiobook, and the power of fear overcome by sex. It felt like another Velma season shortened into a 30 minute episode. Without even knowing about what was going to happen in the next Digital Circus, I had hoped I would be able to talk about it since they're Halloween specials and they're releasing next to one another, and I'm glad I got to compare Velma to another show again. To get this out of the way before the video ends is the animation. It's the same as it has always been for the last two seasons. A brilliant display of animation and character design mixed in with the worst writing in any TV show ever. And Christ, let me just say the animators hit it out of the park with this Black Knight design. Now personally, I never grew up with the character besides that one that got kicked in the dick. <laughs> Seriously, look at this thing. I think I forgot to mention it last video, but the ghost designs in this show are always immaculate as well. Velma sucks though and is boring as a ghost, but Victoria and the Black Knights are my favorite signs that are rivaled by some of my favorite shows. But somehow, only Velma could take a concept like the Black Knight, this one, their own design into a nerdy, Peeping Tom that still continues to be a perv as a ghost and a zombie and always has his helmet off afterwards. Great. More should have been done with the Black Knight, but nope, he's not powerful and looks as stupid as fuck to match it. At least Victoria was actually strong as a ghost. And yeah, that's that's uh, that's the gist of it. Wow. This sucked. It definitely didn't feel as bad to watch because it was just an entire season in one episode. So that's great. Make it stop. I honestly don't have much to say I haven't already said as this special wasn't a great end to anything. It wasn't special, different, the characters solve their shit way too easily. Repeatable villain, it's turned out of place, you get the idea. Look, I just recommend you watch The Amazing Digital Circus. 
The first three episodes are on Glitch on YouTube and Netflix. So if you ever have the time, watch these instead. You'll actually laugh at the cast, not at them. Anyways, spirit out. Hey, so, uh, there was a problem with the ending joke, if you want to call it that. Here's the clip. Man, I'm so glad that the show's finally ended with this special. To tie off the knot. Fuck! I screamed fuck loudly late at night for absolutely no reason. So, as it turns out, two days after I wrote this script, Velma was cancelled for the unforeseeable future. But something people on Twitter aren't grasping onto, whether both sides are in defense of artists or thinking the show is written off, because as we know, HBO Max has a history of writing off shows and the owners, Warner Brothers, writes off its movies. Anyways, since Thelma was cancelled, people are thinking it was written off, when that's not even remotely true. It had lower ratings. If the ratings aren't high, then no one's watching it, and Thelma after season 1 dropped off really fast. Because by the time season 2 arrived, besides the announcement, Fawn returning, Thelma's death and Scrappy, the show wasn't really talked about that often. Yeah, again, people were discussing Scrappy, but how couldn't they? But that was just on Twitter. Then after that, it pretty much just died, since unlike other shows where you could have retrospective theories or tweets, you can't exactly have that with Elmer. And as for the Halloween special, people didn't even realise it had released yet, because the trailers were also low view counts. So again, this show was first renewed because of hate watching, that much is certain. But afterwards, when the trend of Velma died down, so did the cartoon, even on a cliffhanger. The only thing I'll say is that I hope the team of animators that worked on the show find more jobs, even through the negotiations. Because you guys are what made Velma so appealing. I love your character designs, the animation, shading, lighting. I hope you put those skills into other work if you can get it. All I hope is that effort is put into with a writing team or whoever's job title it was, that was responsible for just staining the opportunity to have different race characters from the mystery gang. As for what I said before, currently there are animation negotiations happening to give animators a better deal in wages, job management, and much more. With a lot of familiar faces leading the cause and having others join in to fight the good fight. Causes such as job creep, AI art, and even job unemployment. If you want to support the animation work is ignited, I suggest you check out all the animations concerning the rights they're fighting for, as well as any links to their socials and spread their hashtags around to keep up awareness. Animations under attack, which side are you on? I've always wanted to say that. Spirit out. <laughs>